Now let's connect the rocket nozzle geometry to the flow coming out of it. So remember our key performance parameter is I, which is UE over G. So we want to try to maximize UE. And remember that UE was square root of 2 CP times the combustion chamber temperature, 1 minus P over PC, gamma minus 1 over gamma, all square root. So the exponent gamma, as well as these terms, depend on our choice of propellant. What is the gas? How high fat? How high temperature does it? At which temperature does it burn? And this term depends on the nozzle geometry. So to see how this pressure ratio P over P C is related to the geometry, first let's make some more simplifying assumptions. So let's say that the propellant is a perfect gas, that CP is constant, that the flow is one dimensional in the nozzle. In practice, what that means is that the, mo the nozzle isn't too short. So there's no friction losses, and no heat transfer. And together, these two mean that the flow is isentropic. We'll further uh, assume that the velocity of the flow in the combustion chamber is negligible, and finally, that the flow is steady. Then what we really have is a very general situation of a quasi-one-dimensional flow of a perfect gas in a variable area duct. So, note that rocket nozzles are always shown to be Converging and diverging. This minimum area location is what we call the throat. And as uh, may have been alluded to in the compressible flow part of uh, your fluids course, or maybe or maybe not, um, that's where the flow will be Mach 1. So, if we start from the idle gas law of P equals rho RT and the isentropic flow equation PC over P is CC over T, the gamma over gamma minus 1, as well as the energy equation which gives us the TC over T equals 1 plus U squared over 2 CPT, we can use basically conservation of mass and the definition of mass flow rate, which is m dot is rho u a, to express the mass flow as a function of stagnation quantities. And this derivation is done in the lecture notes, um, but I won't go through the de details here. Um, I'll just give the result which is the Mach number over 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times the Mach number squared to the power of gamma plus 1 over 2 times gamma minus 1 equals the mass flow rate times the square root of R, the gas constant, the stagnation temperature, in this case in the combustion chamber, the stagnation pressure, also in this case in the combustion chamber area, 
the square root of gamma, which is the ratio of specific heats. Now this should look familiar. This was given to you in the propulsion uh, lab homework, um, to, and, this, and you were able to use this to calculate flow um, both in the nozzle and in uh, the tur a turbine inlet. This is called the corrected flow per unit area. And as you can see, it depends only on properties of the gas, gamma, and the Mach number. Now in your fluids course, you either have learned or will learn that for uh, a given mass flow rate, stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature, and gas, A, the area, is minimized at Mach 1. And so this tells us that a throat is required to accelerate a flow beyond Mach 1. So if we call that minimum area A star, then we can use the corrected flow equation to determine that A over A star is 1 over the Mach number times 2 over gamma minus 1, 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared, gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma minus 1. And I can sketch out this curve. We have a Mach number axis here, there's zero, there's Mach one, there's Mach two, and this axis is A star over A, and there's some maximum value. Let's say this is one. Or is it Mach 1? And the curve has that sort of general characteristic. So you can see that, as here, A star is on top. Uh, the minimum area occurs at Mach 1. Uh, and you need to decrease area to get to Mach 1, and then increase area again to go beyond Mach 1.